Number one tells us that the measure of angle ABC, which is right here, so A angle ABC is pi over three radians. And it tells us the coordinates, uh, whoops, the coordinates of that um, angle as well. So pi over three radians here, and then the ordered pair is um, 0.5 comma 0.87. And it asks us, um, then it tells us that the measure of angle ABD, so a new angle, so A, B, and then out to this point D is 2 pi over 3 radians. And it asks us to estimate um, the coordinates of point D. So if this is um, pi over 3 and this is 2 pi over 3 then this would be another pi over three because that would be one pi over three, two pi over three, another pi over three would get us to three pi over three or pi. So this um, point D is just a reflection of C over the Y axis. So if we fold it over, okay, so it's gonna have kind of these same measures, but in the second quadrant, it's gonna have a negative X value and a positive Y value. So this is going to be the point negative 0 0.5 comma 0.87. So the X is going to be negative, Y positive there. Then it tells us that the measure of the angle going to E, so ABE, is 5 pi over, um, 5 pi over 3. So we've got 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. Um, three, and then five pi over three here. So now for this, that means that we have one more pi over three to get back to two pi. So this angle here is also pi over three, same as this one. So now we have a reflection again, this time just over the X axis. So again, this point E is going to have these same numbers, but in the fourth quadrant, your X is positive and your Y is negative. So the ordered pair here is going to be 0.5 comma negative 0 0.87. Number two, give an angle of rotation centered at the origin that sends point P um, to a location whose X and Y coordinates satisfy the given conditions. So for this um, first one here, X is greater than zero and Y is less than zero. So that means that our X is going to be positive and our Y is going to be negative. So a positive X negative Y is this second or sorry, this fourth quadrant. So positive X negative Y. So any angle that goes um, past here, right? and then is between here. And you can do this a lot of different ways, right? Because you could do a negative angle. You could also go all the way around and then name anything um, between here. And since you've been working in radians, I would guess we want to say this in um, radians as well. So remember that this here is 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. So anything that's between 1 and a half pi and 2 pi is going to be fine. Um, so for this example, I'm just going to use the um, pi over 4 reference angles in each quadrant. So I'm just going to name this angle. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4s. So 7 pi over 4 um, would be this angle right here. That's going to give us a positive x coordinate and a negative y coordinate. Um, for this next one, we want a negative y, or sorry, a negative x, so x to be less than zero and y to be greater than zero. So for this one, we want a negative x and a positive y. So negative x, positive y is this um, second quadrant. So anywhere um, from here to here, okay? So anywhere between here and here will give us something in the second quadrant. So remember, this is the um, radian angle of pi over two, and then this would be pi. So anything between one half um, and one pi. And again, I'm just gonna do the um, 
pi over four reference angle. So this would be one pi over four, two pi over four. So this one is three pi over four there. And then finally, we want one that has um, y less than zero and x less than zero. So x and y are both less than zero in the third quadrant. So they're both negative in that third quadrant. So we want something um, bigger than pi and less than one and a half pi. So keeping with my pattern, I'm going to do the pi over four reference angle here. So this is four pi over four. So this would be five pi over four. Number three, Lynn calculates um, 0.97 squared plus 0.26 squared and finds that it's 1.0085. Explain why that point is not on the unit circle. Um, and that's because x squared plus y squared is greater than one or doesn't equal out to one, right? It has to equal out to one squared um, in order to be on the unit circle. And this is equal to more than one squared. Um, now, is it a good estimate for a coordinate on the unit circle? Yes, because it's really close to one squared, right? So it's really close. to one squared. So if R squared were equal to 1.0085, and then you square root this, you get that the radius is 1.004. So it's barely bigger than one. It's just four thousandths bigger than one. So yes, because it's really, really close. Number four, the x coordinate of a point P on the unit circle is zero. If the point is, resu is the result of rotating the point one zero, a certain number of radians. Okay, so the point one zero is here. So if this new point that has an x coordinate of zero is the result of rotating this point by some number of radians counterclockwise, um, what could the angle be that represents that? So if we take this point and we rotate it zero, that has an X coordinate of one. So that doesn't fit the bill here because this would be one zero. So that's not good. Pi over two. So if we rotate this pi over two, that's going to be here. Um, so the X coordinate on the y-axis is zero, the radius is one, so this is gonna be one up the y-axis, so this one is good. Okay, this would be a point zero one, gives us an x-coordinate of zero, that's good. If we rotate it pi, now we're at negative one comma zero, so again, that does not have an x-coordinate of zero, so this is bad. 3 pi over 2, so pi is 2 pi over 2, so this would be 3 pi over 2. So this ordered pair is um, has an x coordinate of 0, and it's at negative 1 for the y. So 0, negative 1 is good for this situation because it has an x of 0. And then if we rotate all the way back to 2 pi, um, it has an ordered pair of 1, 0 again which does not have an x coordinate of zero, so that one would be bad. Number five gives us a triangle and asks us which statements are true. Um, so for part A, it says that the sine is greater than one. That can never happen because your hypotenuse, because remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, your hypotenuse is always the longest side. So this one's always gonna be the longest, so either of these legs divided by the hypotenuse is always going to be bigger than one. So then this, whoops, so then this one is not true. So this is false. Now the tangent of A, remember tangent is equal to um, opposite divided by adjacent. So in this case, we're looking at the opposite side BC divided by AC. It looks like BC is smaller than AC, right? So when we do BC divided by AC, this would be less than one if we're going by looks. Cosine is less than one, yes, always. Okay, the adjacent side divided by the longest side, always gonna be less than one. Sine of A is less than sine of B. So if we look at sine of A, 
is BC over AB. And then sine of B opposite is AC over hypotenuse AB. So we're really trying to decide which of these is bigger, BC or AC. So it looks like in this drawing that AC is bigger. So AC, um, so sine of B is going to be bigger than sine of A, which is what this says. So sine of A is less than sine of B. For cosine of A, so cosine is going to be um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we're looking at A, adjacent is AC over hypotenuse. Then if we're looking at um, angle B to do the cosine, so cosine of B is going to be side BC over AB. And so AC is the bigger side, since the bottoms are both the same, AC is the bigger side. So this um, cosine of A is going to be bigger than cosine of B. So this is false. And then tangent of A. So if we look at tangent, remember tangent is opposite. So tangent of A opposite is BC over adjacent is AC. And then tangent of B. So opposite of B is AC over adjacent BC. So BC looks to be the shorter one. So short over long, this one's less than one. And then in this one, we've got the larger one on top. So this one is greater than one. This one is less than one. So tangent of A is less than tangent of B. Number six, um, angle POQ. So this angle shown here is one radian. And the, the radius of the circle is one unit, okay? So we've got this angle here is one radian. The radius is one unit. So what's the length of um, the arc QP? So that's going to be one unit um, because a, um, a radian angle, so one radian, gives you an arc that equals one radius. That's where the radian radius part comes from. If you have a one radian angle, the arc length is the same length as the radius. So this is going to be one unit long. And then explain why the length of arc PQ is less than one sixth of the whole circle. So if we um, kind of put six of these arcs in, right? So if we put six arcs in, so six times one would give us six radians. And we know that all the way around the circle is two times pi radians. And two times pi, pi is approximately 3.14. So two times 3.14 is 6.28 radians. And so a sixth of the way around this is going to be larger than one radian because six radians doesn't equal out to the total of 6.28. Number seven, label these points on the unit circle. So Q is the image of P after an 11 pi over six rotation. So um, we've got pi, which would be six pi over six, right? So pi in six, is six pi over six. Okay, this is also all the way back around to two pi. And two pi in six is 12 pi over six because 12 divided by six is two. So then we wanna get almost all the way over here, right? Just one sixth of a pi before two pi. So here's where 11 pi over six would be. You could also look at, um, this is three pi over two. So in six, multiply by three over three. So this would be nine pi over six. So we're at nine. And then this would be 10 pi over six, 11 pi over six. Um, so that's, well, what are we calling that, Q? Um, next one, R is the image of P after a three pi over two rotation. So three pi over two is here because um, this is pi, and then we'd have um, 
half of pi here. So one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. And so we can label that one R. U is the image of P after a two pi over three rotation. So now we're looking at taking pi really, and pi is half the circle, right? And splitting this into three equal pieces. So one pi over three would be about here, two pi over three would be here, so that three pi over three would equal out to pi. So it's gonna be about here. And this we're labeling U. And then V is a one pi over three rotation. So taking, again, this pi, splitting it into thirds, so it's gonna be a third of the way around um, to half the circle. So pi over three is gonna be here and we'll call that V.